Good evening, everyone. Assalamu alaikum, adab. A very warm welcome to this live panel discussion hosted by Zirat Times on how Kashmiri women entrepreneurs are navigating the COVID crisis. My name is Seher and I'll be your host this evening. As we all know, COVID crisis has severely impacted business and trade throughout the globe and Kashmir is no exception. As though challenges and issues are much bigger and have been there before COVID crisis as well. Nevertheless, the COVID crisis is unprecedented. Business women face challenges day by day and experience unique issues and challenges of their own. How do business of Kashmir cope up with this situation? Are there any opportunities in these crises that women can leverage for this? Some of the questions we'll be addressing today. Before I start, I would like to introduce my distinguished panelists for today's program. Ms. Ghazala Amin, entrepreneur. Naila Ali Khan, working with academics, and she has written extensively about Kashmiri women. Ms. Ruhi Nazki, cultural entrepreneur and owner of our very really well-known Chai Jai. Basima Ajaz, vice chairman, SRM Welkan Institute. Uh, Mayanka Handu, our very really well-known Kashmiri entertainer. Neetu Jalali, founder, Zafran uh, Kator. Andeep Ashraf. Founder Nakash Studios and Kazan Munir Khan, who's an artist. So, before we start, let's start with uh, Miss Ruhi Nazki, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, uh, are you? Am I audible to you? Yes, very okay. much. Okay. So, so ma'am, my uh, question will be like: We all know you're an entrepreneur, and you've started a trend in Kashmir rooted in local culture. How have you been coping with this situation? Well, the situation is very grim and it's very grim for all of us, not just here in Kashmir, but globally. Probably this is the first time that, you know, the whole world is facing a situation that has not been seen before. So we have been shut. And like I think earlier someone else pointed out, we have been shut since August um, last year. So uh, the kind of, uh, you know, challenges we have faced here in Kashmir um, have been compounded, of course by COVID and uh, we are still uh, shut. Most of the outlets are shut. We are looking to open maybe as a takeaway or home delivery option, but uh, yeah, things are not, not looking too good right now. Okay. So ma'am, Ghazala ma'am, are you here? Are you able yes. to hear me now? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay ma'am, how has COVID impacted your business? Um, COVID is something I think that uh, there is no difference, not a lot of difference between the way it has impacted women and men, in my opinion. Uh, because the first issue that we all face is the health issue. We have to be very careful when we go out. Uh, the accessibility to our workplaces uh, is totally limited. It was, um, uh, you know, for a while it was completely shut down. Um, uh, the places uh, that we needed to go to procure raw material, they were out of bounds for us. Uh, we couldn't uh, get anything uh, flown in. We couldn't get anything by transport. So it was a complete dead end for every business. And I think more so for women because they already face problems, um, uh, logistic problems, uh, their problems within their families. And then also one of the, um, I don't know whether the rest of the panelists would agree with me, but one of the things that uh, the women had to face during COVID was the burden of having families uh, around all the time. Um, uh, we were uh, sitting at home and we have to cater to everybody. That is a part of being a woman, uh, no matter who you are. <laughs> we all have to look after our own people. And uh, the, um, uh, you know, we didn't have time to uh, look into our businesses, uh, which is, uh, you know, as women, we all face anyway in our businesses. So there are a lot of things which are going on. Okay, thank you, ma'am. That was a valid point uh, you said. So next question is for ma'am Neetu Jalali. Ma'am, how have business of women generally been impacted? Um, I think it's not just women business, but I think um, I would just, uh, as a business woman or a businessman, say that all the businesses are impacted. But I think for how it works is, whether you're a woman entrepreneur or you're a male entrepreneur, what works is an entrepreneur is distinguished by thinking out of the box. So if you have the ability to think out of the box, possibly, possibly you can create a solution. For example, uh, uh, 
I I actually watched a lot of Netflix for that entire entire lockdown period. <laughs> but then I woke up one such fine day, and it was because everybody's business was getting affected. So people were not buying. I'm into clothing, designing, and um, but I used the opportunity to go very social. So I did lots of social, Insta lives, discounts, sales, only because I had to sustain or retain my people, my staff back in Kashmir. I have to be continuously giving them something. to sustain and retain so i think i i was trying i didn't get many sales i have to agree but uh, the brand brand was out there so it's there it's there is there everybody kind of knows now what saffron is and yes i did get few sales but eventually i have to i have to admit that i actually found a way out so while i was sitting at home for a month as um, uh, ma'am gazala very rightly said that you know we have to tend to our family so we need to cook a lot i cook so much but eventually i thought that why shouldn't i actually try and give a kashmiri cuisine experience and do the home delivery system so i used my driver used to take me to my studio as a delivery boy and i did that and i think that was a brilliant hit right at the and i started that uh, around um, eid around that time So we did Vazvan Tara. Oh, I have to admit that I actually hired a Vaza uh, just before, just at the point of lockdown. One of the restaurants was shutting here in Bangalore. I hired him, and he was planning to go back, but I kind of didn't want him to go back. So he was with me, and we just did it. So they are one more addition to the family. So yeah, so that's that's how I leverage basically. That's how I can say I I did my uh, business. I'm supporting. and we um and rest of the clothing business i wouldn't say it's great it's kind of dead but eventually i feel it's a temporary uh, dam so permanently i just looked at the long term solution and i found this to support my other people back in kashmir because they've been with me for many years and i can't just um, i can't just leave them so i had to do something to support them oh so, so you I had a great experience that. during this lockdown period thank you ma'am So, uh, next, I would go to Miss Shiba Shah. Sorry for not introducing you before. Mm-hmm. It's so okay. she's an entrepreneur from tourism sector. So, ma'am, I would like to ask you, like, how is the tourism sector being impacted? And as a woman, how are you coping it? Well, tourism sector every time it gets, uh, is there there is any trouble in Kashmir, it gets it gets a hit. So with COVID also. we faced a lot of problems a lot of issues whether it's hotel industry whether it's uh, house boat industry any field you touch with tourism it got badly affected we though some of the hotels have tried to um, open their places for uh, quarantine but again it's like hand to mouth and uh, rest of the thing there's nothing much done even though flights have been resumed but uh, again the traffic is very poor Okay, thank you, ma'am. So, my I would like to go to Miss Naila Khan. Ma, are you there, Naila Khan? Am yes, I audible? Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. As we all know that uh, you've been You're written. You're very ex- audible. Okay, as we all know that you've written extensively <laughs> about Kashmiri women issues and you know and how people are facing the women issues and you've written all the books for Kashmiri women. so i would like to ask you like people are facing an extraordinary situation how do you see that situation ma'am so unlike the rest of your incredible panelists i'm not an entrepreneur i'm an academic and as you pointed out a writer so i will talk as an academic and i have written out a few points so um in the wake of the outbreak of covid-19 as we are seeing globally bewilderment reigns supreme Self-imposed isolation is the new social order here as well. Right? Currently, I'm located in Oklahoma, and self uh, self-imposed isolation is the new social order here as well. And the way I see it, COVID nineteen. You know, a lot of people argue that COVID nineteen has created a leveling of society, but I don't see that leveling at all. In fact, I would argue that COVID-19 is operating to reinforce ultra-nationalist 
dependence. And I would also argue that COVID-19 has led to the politicization of identity in the form of fanaticism and xenophobia. And globally, not just in one country or one nation, but globally, we are witnessing outbursts of entrenched nationalism in this era, as well as movements aimed at recuperating a mythical national identity in order to eliminate the penetration of the alien other. And I will explain in just a minute, I'll give you examples to explain what exactly I mean by that. Now, there are some governmental agencies as well as vigilante groups, again, brazenly, that uh, conflate, brazenly and globally, that conflate COVID-19 with a particular religious identity or racial group. And while we see economies plummeting around the globe and we see the world shutting down, fanatical agendas have resurfaced as well as political interests related to them. Right now here uh, at the university and the college where I teach, we made the transition to online classes exactly as you did in Kashmir. Um, and my students and I were able to create a safe environment in which we examined our locations of privilege and we sought emotional empowerment in order to understand systems that have generated a culture of silence about systemic discrimination. Ms. When it comes to men and women, real quick, Sarah, when it comes to men and women, we have seen an increase in domestic violence. Again, not in one particular country or one particular region, but globally. Because okay. this pandemic has led to greater isolation for women, and it has also led to less mobility for several women, particularly in rural areas. And okay, I'm talking about rural areas Naila. in the United States as well. Yeah. Ms. Naila, if you don't mind, I'll get back to you. Uh, so let's talk about the education sector. Basima, ma'am. Uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've so, seen how we've seen like how education sector has been impacted. What do you perfectly. think? As, yeah, as uh, ma'am uh, Naila did say have, that I've not completed yet. I've not okay. completed. Yet. Okay, so sure, you're, sure. you're a prestigious uh, institute in North Kashmir. So you have seen how students have suffered. You are a trendsetter as a women in education sector. So how right. do you how do you think it has been impacting the education system of Kashmir? Yeah, see, uh, let me put it across. Uh, COVID uh, pandemic was not new for us in terms of the crisis situation because we have faced it for many years now. Um, right from 2008, I have been seeing it 8, 10, 14, then it was 16, and then 19 and 20 now. So uh, I believe as an institute uh, of mine, like if I talk about Welkin, uh, we have always used a crisis situation as a situation, you know, wherein uh, we look at new opportunities. Fine, the only way COVID uh, pandemic was different for us, it was like, uh, you know, we had this, at least the 2G connection with us and we were able to provide some digital learning to our students. So um, that was what was different uh, between the COVID and the previous uh, crisis situation. So as the COVID started, right from January, we were following it and looking at, you know, what's happening, what's happening. And probably we never felt that we are going to be hit in uh, this way. So as an institution, what uh, basically if I have to talk about Welkin, what I had done is because we were shut right from August. But I took special permission from the government and I was open during the winters. So I had my school on um, for the month of December, Jan and Feb already. I had students coming in, not in the full uh, strength, but I had a good 50 percentile students coming. So once we started the school and the pandemic started, you know, students had hard, hardly attended 10 days of classwork in their proper uniform. So after that, once they were back home, we really didn't know what we are going to do, what's going to happen. We probably thought it's going to be just a week or a month or 15 days. And none of us thought that it's going to go on for months and months together. So what we did it with 2G speed, I requested all my teachers to prepare online, um, you know, video lectures. And we actually uploaded them on our uh, Facebook post. 
right we put it in the public domain because i already always believe that education is something which should not be uh, no one should be deprived of fine so we put it into the public domain of our on our fp page so that every individual student be it from the garment sector or the private sector should be actually able to watch and learn something so we actually started with that and um, thanks to almighty and the support of teachers and the parents we we were uh, getting good response and support so within the next few days we went ahead and we actually started with these online classes with zoom and things like that it has definitely been challenging because you know working with 2g speed and teachers not having uh, you know having just the minimum resources with them but still um, you know putting in their best and uh, right now i should say um, that what we learned from it is that the way lx3 or uh, water has been made uh, you know a public necessity i believe that the digital content should be made you know a priority uh, be it at the central government level or be it at the state government uh, level so that's how uh, it's basically looking at and uh, perfectly my online classes are going perfect teachers are putting in immense uh, very you nice. know efforts after and, all this uh, struggle students yeah students are putting in uh, immense effort parents are learning uh, just one thing i would like to add in here my school because we belong to a, you know a kind of a rural setup and i'm proud of the fact that i have a lot of first generation learners that's you know? really that's so, really yeah first generation learners wherein i probably uh, you know the mother or the father even doesn't know how the pen or the pencil has to be held and, and they then have go through the classes yeah, with smartphones online yeah yeah so it is and uh, one thing i would like to appreciate that the parents are also putting an immense effort you know they're actually uh, understanding as to how important the digital content is because initially we had uh, you know certain parents uh, coming up and saying that thank it's you. not possible thank you ma'am ma come to... back to you we'll come back yeah, to yeah you. sure sure we'll sure, sure sure so i'll mayanka handu yes i would like yes. to ask you like you have made a trademark in kashmiri's humor and you have taken a rebirth to the kashmiri humor and kashmiris have been watching your videos during these covid crisis how are you how do you how do you cope with the kashmiri women with the psychological effect and the socially and how the women are outcoming with the these challenges do women have adequate support system uh well uh, first of all i think uh, am i audible yeah 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 all right uh when you talk about women entrepreneurship i don't think uh, the concept is alien to kashmir at least because i look at it very differently for me uh, you know a lady who works in the farm or a gardwadin for that matter a lady who you know sells fish is also an entrepreneur that is how i look at it now if i talk about myself uh, as an owner of uh, my registered entity called asun kashur there are two things that i do one is that i upload uh, comic videos with social messages and most of them are women centric uh second is what i have uh, is an online shop right so as a performer i am somebody who feels more empowered on stage and likes to interact with uh, the live audience you know but uh, because of covid uh, that is not something that we are able to do anymore now my uh, suggestion and request in that case uh, to the uh, event managers uh, across jammu and kashmir would be to host more and more programs online and people also have to you know create that kind of acceptance that this is the new new normal you know and monetize it to support the local artists i mean when we can i'm sorry to say when we can have people like zubin mehta and yani uh, come to kashmir who have nothing to do with our territory uh, might as well you know promote your own local artists where we are also trying to uh, you know help uh, uh, talk about some taboos at least i have tried to do it when you talk about women primarily uh be it uh, be it anything be it uh, depression etc or uh, drug addiction for that matter i have tried to convey it in a humorous way now about the online shop well that has taken a hit because of two things one because of covid we had uh, lockdown for two months so business has been zero uh, now with courier services resuming i hope the business to pick up uh but we also have uh, the internet is a problem in our uh, territory 
you know so it's quite discouraging as an artist because you try to put in so much effort into making the video so that people are able to derive some information out of it or even for entertainment purpose in these uh, trying times but they do not have uh, adequate internet speed you know uh, so most of them are running on 2g it's rather discouraging for uh, me as an artist uh, and i hope with these for my online shop with these courier services resuming i hope the business to pick up but if you ask me overall i think 2020 is going to be hard we can use this time to maybe plan uh, keep our spirits high and uh, i look forward to the coming year uh, thank you ma'am it was a very valid point about the internet connection we have in kashmir yeah. so uh, next i would move to ms khazan munir Yeah. Khaz, are you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how is the situation impacting upcoming startups, like those who were just about to start their own careers? Like for the upcoming starters, I guess before COVID, we had the three seventy, the three seventy thing. So uh, it's like from fourth August. Um, am I audible? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, fine. Uh, from fourth August two thousand nineteen, I think all the startups have actually seen a downfall. I know many people who had actually left their jobs in Delhi, is Mumbai, and in other parts of the world, and they wanted to come back and wanted to start something of their own. These people actually got shattered after fourth August. They actually came on roots because what they did, they actually kept all their saving for their personal ventures. And what happened to them? it had a downfall then around in jan and feb we kashmiris thought that now everything is normalizing so now we can you know move ahead and we can do something and then what happened i think we all know about it so for an entrepreneur especially in kashmir it is very difficult as ma'am also said that first of all the people who are working online we have internet problems like we have 2g problems we cannot upload videos we cannot post anything for even for a single picture to post it takes all your, uh, so and all your work depends on the internet exactly artists. all depends on it and it's like for artists also what we have to do we have to display our work on net and for a single picture it takes almost half an hour, hour to upload so what do you expect from such a slow speed but yeah i can say one thing that from past 15 or 10 days the situation is getting a bit better with me i am getting a bit of orders but yeah the only my only criteria is the safety of my client as well as my safety because we are still in the covid 19 phase it's not a post covid 19 phase so i have to take care of that other than that entrepreneurs in kashmir the people who are working here it's actually hats off to them how they are working on what path they are working and what struggles they are going through whether it's a male or a female i guess both genders have been impacted very bad thank you khazan thank you i'll move to miss andleep 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 ma'am is not here i think so Okay, Gazala, uh, Miss Gazala. I think you are on mute. Yeah, ma'am. What about the domestic challenges we face? Um, what do you mean by domestic challenges within the house or within the state? Within the state, what? if you're talking about the Kashmir. See, uh, the environment for startups, especially. females is not very friendly um, uh, the women who come out to work they come out to work with barriers at various levels within their homes and outside their homes and one of the major things that they face in any case is financial uh, problems uh, it is a trend now for properties to be named uh, uh, where women are owning properties and things like that see at the end of the day no bank bank gives you money without mortgage no matter how much you uh, you know manipulate them how much you tell them that there are schemes where um, uh, you know you are supposed to give up to a crore of rupees in uh, without any uh, uh, security uh, but that's not uh, you know implemented on ground uh, there are a lot of uh, things that the government has done uh, to secure startups uh, 
but it is not implemented. The implementation is really very bad, especially at the level of banks. Uh, they're not uh, they're not startup friendly at all. Uh, number one and number two also um, you know there are uh, uh, the startup has its has and an, has to have a very friendly environment uh, to go ahead with. Uh, the environment in the government offices is not very friendly for startups. We all know that. We have all gone through it. When I started, I went through it. I may not go through it now, uh, but the accessibility to the right people and uh, to be able to get your work done because we have a lot of red tapism at various levels. There is no single window clearance for things. These are things we need and corruption is a huge problem. This is something I blatantly come out and say today. Corruption is a huge problem for startups. You see, if I start up with 10 lakhs and I have to give three lakhs in corruption, where does my um, uh, enterprise stand? What do I do with seven lakhs for an enterprise that requires a minimum of 10 lakhs to start? So these are things that we need to be looking at. These are real problems that startups go through uh, wow. and lots of others, but I'd allow the others uh, to talk as well. I can go on and on for the whole night, but- <laughs> Okay, we'll get back to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, we'll get back to you, ma'am. Okay, I would now move to uh, Neetu Jalali. Yeah. Uh, you work uh, very passionately on Kashmiri handicrafts. How has the COVID lockdown throughout the world and economic slump impacted handicrafts demand? How do you see the situation as? Well, I think handicrafts all across is terribly impacted and especially Kashmir, as everybody said, it's not just lockdown with this COVID, it's been prior, like we've had many issues for many months, right, so ongoing and ongoing. So, but the post, uh, I think for me personally, I, uh, for handicrafts, it's, uh, I remember there were there was a batch of students that came to Bangalore and there was we were meeting them up because they were young budding uh, artists and coming and showing showcasing their designs and eventually we were planning to you know interview them and a few other things were happening but all of that were bust and nothing of that happened so we we couldn't do anything for them at that point so I think that those young budding it's it's a, it's, it's quite distraught actually at this stage because then they get disappointed. Then secondly, when I was, I, for me, because uh, I work with various artisans, not just in Kashmir and all across India, actually, I have a few different, different units in different states. So everywhere it's been a massive trouble. And I think in Kashmir, I, we, we always face this internet issue every time and the electricity issue as well. So that, keeping that in mind, um, I think many of my artisans faced a lot of trouble. But as I said, in, in, because I tried to retain them, so I worked on that, but that's a very individual strategy for each and every business and a different strength that comes, that every business is different. So I cannot really um, uh, point out that. But I think the, um, it's, been, it's been hit really bad. And I think we, it will take us a lot of, not many months to recuperate the whole thing back into the normal sea. And I don't see that happening. Uh, for next few months. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would uh, like to go to Ms. Ruhi Nasri. Ma'am, uh, how do you see uh, startups, like can startups survive in Kashmir's uncertain economic environment? There are too many uncertainties. How do you see future of the Kashmiris and how Kashmiri women face this situation? Yeah, I think everybody has made the point that uh, it's I, like I also said, that situation in Kashmir is already very, very difficult. And now COVID has come in. But it has added uh, another dimension, which is the health dimension. So we cannot, uh, you know, we cannot avoid, uh, or I cannot say tomorrow that, no, I will put my staff out at risk because here is a health issue, which was not there in August. But uh, like everybody else said that online is very important for us that we need people, um, we need 4G. We don't have 4G. So if we want to do e-commerce, how do we do it? Like I said, I'm not very optimistic right now. Like I said at the beginning, uh, things do look pretty grim to me, uh, especially in Kashmir. It is grim everywhere, but here it looks like maybe it is going to be very, very difficult for us to come out of this. Okay, thank you. 
And uh, yeah, and another point I wanted to corroborate what sure. um, uh, Ghazala had said that for women, for instance, you see the inequalities that already exist, and we are seeing that you know uh, domestic violence has increased. Uh, women have to work more at home. Uh, I'm not saying that men do not work. <laughs> Some of them do, maybe not all. <laughs> but then most women, you know, the 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 whole uh, task of taking care of your families, taking care of the education of children, it all falls on women. So the the work that they have to do inside the home is huge. But there is another aspect of it that gets uh, neglected is the emotional labor that women do in their homes and also in the workplace. We are all rounder, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, we are. But then we also uh, tend to ignore that what kind of a pressure it puts on all of us. So mental health, again, is a huge issue. And I'm not saying that it's only for women. Or you know, what happens if I say, for instance, okay, mental health becomes an issue, then uh, the criticism comes that women are weak. They're not able to handle stresses. That's not true. There are structural inequalities in the system. Women are doing unpaid labor at home. If you were to monetize the work that they are doing at home, we'd be millionaires, all of us sitting at home. <laughs> Has anybody ever thought about that? And so, and what happens is, I mean, we do it out of love and care, of course. But uh, when you come out and you say that, you know what, this is impacting badly, you are having anxiety issues or you're having depression and you're not able to attend to your work, your professional work, the way a man is able to do, uh, the criticism is, see, we told you, women can't cope. So how do we, uh, you know, these are perceptions. These are inequalities that already exist in the system. And they don't just exist in Kashmir, they exist everywhere in the world. So are we, uh, COVID has provided us an opportunity to open up all this debate. And what has happened is world over, it has exposed all the systems. What did we think America was? What did we think uh, UK was, Europe was? I mean, we have all, all the institutions, political systems, everything has been exposed. So we Thank see that the world is not an equal place. Sorry, did you say something? Yeah, you, you can proceed. All right. So we, the world is not what we thought it was. Uh, Kashmiris can take some, um, uh, some, they can feel a little happy because... As we say, we Kashmiris have a jigra. They have, they have jigra. They are, I mean, they, honestly, the resilience, and I don't want to use big words for it, but 30 years of conflict, 30 years of terrible uncertainty, 30 years of bloodshed for whatever reason, and you have Kashmiris I mean, they, they, they laugh, they play, they work, they do business, their children get educated. They are fantastic people. So, uh, yes, so the skill set that they have gained in these 30 years has stood them uh, in good, uh, you know, they had, they had an advantage because of that, I would say. Five years back when I came back to Mumbai, I had been living in Mumbai for about 16 years. Uh, so when I came back, I, I was hugely, um, you know, I was hugely impressed by how people work here. And every day you have to have a new strategy. However, COVID is different. I keep saying that to everyone. I have taken challenges at Chai Jai in the last four years. We had to shut down for five months. There was no business. Ma'am, ma we'll come back to you if you don't mind. All right. Okay. okay. Before going to uh, before uh, going to Miss Naila, um, I would like to say to all the viewers who have joined us now, this is uh, running live on Zirat Times Facebook page, and it will be available on the same page after the program will end. So, Miss Naila, if we compare uh, Jane Kane's situation with the rest of the world from a uh, sociological point of view, what do you think can uh, Jane K handle this? How do you think like people living outside? All right, so again, I'm going to respond as an academic. As everyone pointed out, Jammu and Kashmir has been going through a very, very critical phase since August 5th, 2019, right? Politically, uh, economically, Jammu and Kashmir has been paralyzed. Socially also, we have seen enormous ups and downs because of the political situation. 
and because of the silencing of dissent. And Jammu and Kashmir, Kashmiri society has always been patriarchal. It's always been conservative. I think we have seen, I don't want to be negative. Yes, Kashmiris are very resilient. Kashmiri women in particular, they have dealt with whatever has come their way with a lot of courage, a lot of patience. But at the end of the day, we have deeply entrenched patriarchal structures in our society, right? So sociologically, you see, as an academic, I had to deal with students from diverse socioeconomic backgrounds. And I had several students who were trying to make ends meet in the midst of this pandemic. And I had quite a few students who felt the need to work two jobs so they could pay their bills because their family members had been laid off. So unemployment is not unique to Jammu and Kashmir in the midst of this pandemic. Globally, unemployment is ripe. And a lot of people have been laid off in this part of the world. They've been furloughed. So I had young students who felt the need to support their parents, who felt the need to support their uh, siblings. And even the transition to Zoom in America, you know, in Kashmir, you've had a lot of difficulty with the internet, 2G and 4G. Uh, but in America also, access to Wi-Fi is not equal. Access to Wi-Fi is unequal. So I had students from some socioeconomic backgrounds who had a lot of difficulty joining my Zoom sessions. They had a lot of difficulty participating in my Zoom sessions because of, uh, because of the quality, because of the quality of their internet connection. You see, living in that part of the world, in South Asia, in Kashmir, I'm sure a lot of people think that in, in America, everyone leads a luxurious life. In America, egalitarianism is the norm. But that is not true. There are diverse socioeconomic levels here as well. And there are racial groups in this part of the world that are not as privileged as others. So for instance, there are minorities in this part of the world. I have Hispanic students. I have African-American students who are not as privileged as my Caucasian students, right? And they do not have equal access to Wi-Fi. So it was very difficult for me to get through to them last semester in the wake of this pandemic. Uh, that was one thing I wanted to point out. The other thing I wanted to point out real quick, you know, uh, and, and Seher and Arjuman, both of you, this is a fantastic panel, but I wish it had been more diverse. I honestly wish you had included a couple of women from Jammu and a couple of women from Ladakh. I would have liked to see a little more regional and ethnic diversity. We'll do, we'll do other programs. Panel. We'll do other programs as well now. Okay, great, great. So yeah. what I want to point out, and I talk a lot about this in my classes, is that we are seeing dangerous attempts to homogenize entire ethnic groups, entire racial groups, right? We are seeing dangerous attempts to pigeonhole people. For instance, what am I trying to say by that? I'll get back so, to you, I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you. Okay. Right. So right, uh, I would like to move to Ms. Basima. Uh, as an academician, you work closely with children, including girls and also their parents. How do you see the psychological impact of uh, the uh, cover crisis on girls and women, how these psychological changes could be overcome? Um, to be very um, honest with you, I'm uh, really proud of the fact that uh, girls are doing extremely well when I compare them to boys. Be it any, um, you know, activity, scholastic or non-scholastic activity in the, in the institution. Fine. So, uh, but when it comes to the parents' point of view, at times I do feel that, you know, we still have that in Kashmir, wherein uh, we believe that the male child is probably going to be a real bread 
earn it tomorrow you know I, i kind of feel that still is there in the minds of the parents but uh, as i have been associated uh, with minds this institution and in the sector of education for the past 14 odd years now i see a sea change you know uh, because i had just finished my education i got back from bangalore i joined this institution so if i compare uh, 2006 with 2000 2020 right now there is a sea change there is definitely a sea change and i kind of believe that you know girls are more subtle and they are um, focused and they have those benchmarks you know to achieve while as the boys are very carefree and they really don't care you know about so this is uh, what i have realized and uh, as we uh, you know that that kind of uh, um, respect and regard okay still is better with the girl child when i compare it uh, with the boys throughout thank you thank you vasiha so i would like to move to ms shiba shiba i think she yeah, i am here i am here okay okay ma'am uh, how do you see the future of uh, you know tourism sector in uh, j and k how do you plan your move first well as tourism is concerned and that, especially in jammu and kashmir turmoil has the first effect on tourism we all we always get hiccup like our business 100% depend on online whether it's suji definitely we also face a lot of problems as our banking everything is done online well we hope like after this covid maybe things can improve like this industry is only based on hope if you see we have lots of uh, hoteliers connected lots of houseboat owners and transporters even any like any industry you take it has a link with tourism and uh, like so many people are dependent on tourism it depends how government is going to be with us and how things will face but like so many people believe that uh, this year is gone for tourism we hope next year might things come up in a positive manner okay thank you we just we can only hope for the betterment of kashmir yeah <laughs> okay so uh, i'll move to ms khazin ms khazin how yes. are young Uh, how are young people imagining their future today in j and k a lot of youngsters have lost jobs outside j and k and they're back to their homes how does you plan your move next uh, see as personally uh, what i plan is like uh, in this covid crisis also uh, it was never a low point for me i know i have not earned and maybe i am at a very privileged position because i don't have to feed my family so i can cannot talk on behalf of them who actually have to feed them i i find myself to be privileged totally privileged person i cannot talk on behalf of the people who actually have to feed their family like who go on radars and who buy uh, and who sell small things but yeah for young entrepreneurs it is a low point it is a very low point they have actually given up their jobs they were here they were on their motherland so that they could do something of their own like we all know that kashmir has like best of the sceneries it has best of the climate and everyone wants to come back to the motherland like it attracts you back and they were doing that but unfortunately first phase was different and now it's covid phase now covid phase is different it is a bit of disappointment for all of them and the people i know and the people i have talked to they have lost all hope because they are saying it's not a hartal it's not a curfew it's like a proper curfew on mankind it's a proper curfew on human beings and it's not just kashmir it's all over the world so whether they start a business here they will have to wait everyone i guess everyone has to wait it's not just kashmir it's like everyone has to wait it's kashmir it's india it's world everyone has to wait it's like now what i can say it's wallahu alam Allah knows best what will happen next but yeah the time of the covid time which we have spent in that time personally i have not let myself down the things i did like you can see my wall this is it's what i did to myself i was about to tell it's very attractive 
<laughs> thank you so much this is what i did in covid i uh, i am an artist so i learned mandala art i started doodling and the best thing which i think i did i did a ramzan series and it was that i made it a point that every day i should upload something related to islam but in a pictorial form made by me and believe me it was not just parents their kids messaged me and said why don't you publish a book like a pictorial book for everyone that they will know about it so this is what i did in my uh, quarantine no not exactly quarantine i was nowhere please uh, i was nowhere i was just here only so this is what i did in my covid 19 times and just add to it as said you said that we kashmiris have jigra just on a humorous point let me tell you after covid 19 every kashmiri is having a yurt and that to a big one <laughs> yes because everyone is eating and sitting eating and sitting so i guess uh, after uh, in this session also we should talk about this thing that how to get back on track and how to get into shape because this niche yurt is actually creating a problem yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you, Kazan, for sharing your home quarantine session. Okay, next, uh, Mayanka. Main. It's called Menka. Menka. Okay, sorry. Menka. Yeah. Menka. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Ma'am, uh, I would like to ask you. Like, this is a difficult time for all of us, including women in our, you know, on the asset as you put it. What do you think Kashmiri women should do to overcome this situation? What strengths they can draw upon? I'll tell you what. We live. in an unfair world right and when it comes to women so my dear ladies please multiply it by 100 okay there are enough and more people who are going to pull you down we may have thousands of sessions like we are doing today but uh, i hope that it helps people think and introspect but uh, sure. honestly i don't i don't have much hope if i talk about myself i started 3 years back and i think about 2 and 1/2 years back i got my company registered and people very close to me i had them messaging me and calling me hate dukandar hai bane which translates to that you've become a shopkeeper i said yes a very proud one too so what's wrong with being a shopkeeper if you don't have shopkeepers how will you run your life you need a shopkeeper and why not and uh, then there were people like you commercialized it i said i'm not uh, you know uh, flicking your money i'm not asking you at a gun point to open your wallets and give me money it's up to you it's out there and open you want to buy you buy it you like my stuff you buy it so the crux of it is uh, we live in an unfair world and misogyny can die right now 100 deaths but it will not i know so uh, more than anything i think it is more about your mental strength uh people will pull you down if you're a woman they will try for it more because they find it easier and uh, i think strong women challenge men uh so i enjoy out of it to be very honest i get a kick out of it right so it's more about mental strength but do not let anything dull your sheen do not let anything dull your shine they are going to talk and i used to get a lot of uh, what i would refer to as filth i'm sorry to use such words but it's changed over a period of time because uh, i have stayed strong uh, i've developed a thick skin and for budding entrepreneurs especially females uh, please in say daro mat uh, they you know what is their what what is the li- limit what till where where can they go they can write a bad comment about you make a comment about your character which is very easy to do to a woman and that's it unki utni hi taakat hai that's it that is the limit you know so stay strong Uh, we live in an unfair world and i'm sorry we i can we can't help it but we can just be strong so oh, thank you ma'am thank you so let's come to the final round and uh, let's just send few positive messages to the women of uh, jnk ma'am neetu ma'am what would you be your message to the women of uh, jammu and kashmir how should they cope up with and overcome this difficult situation during covid 19 i think as uh, menika very rightly said that you know daroma uh but i would like to just add that to add one point is that if we believe in that we are women and we can we get that we, we are kind of less than men or something uh we just totally lose that and we are we fail there so there is no there is no belief we have created it humans have created it so don't go by that and i think um as for in jammu and kashmir for women it's difficult i agree i go there for my work and every time i go i um it is it's daunting sometimes but um but then build your support system and what i believe is if all women come together as community we build our own community i don't think 
Uh, I don't think we even need outsiders then. And I think I so strongly believe in that we support each other. We give a shout out to each other, whether it's on Instagram, Facebook, anywhere. Give a shout out to each and every business that is coming up there. Give a shout out for young budding entrepreneurs. You don't lose anything. I mean, I love, I, I just have to admit, I love Jai Jai, but I have, I just made so many posts about it once I went there because I went to Kashmir for many years. And when I went there, it was like a, especially after London. So it was a dream come true, like literally to have that chai there in that beautiful setting. And I made a shout out. So it's- You get a lot of love from me. That's thank amazing. you, thank you so much. And I would love to do it for everybody. Let's come together as a community, support each other, whether it's at a young level or budding level or an established level. We, we can, I think we can definitely support. That's what I do a lot on Instagram. I don't mind doing it for anybody. Just come, Thank let's be a team. For such a wonderful message. Thank you, Neetu. Okay, uh, next, uh, Miss Ruhi Naski and your message to the JNK women. Uh, I think uh, the point that was just now mentioned, uh, we have to be supportive of each other. Community is everything. I uh, cannot uh, emphasize that enough. And <laughs> the larger community also, and of course, women supporting women. Unless that happens, I don't think we can achieve anything. But one thing I'd like to differ is when we uh, place the <clears throat> of being fearless and you know, brave only on women or those that are bullied or trolled or you know, in some way harassed, uh, that's not fair. So it is not bravery to stand up to filth and nastiness. No, the onus and the responsibility lies on those people who are doing it. Uh, but we have to have an open and more transparent conversations about it. There can be mentorship. People help each other. Like this now was mentioned that we stand together and stand for each other. Of course, you know, you know, uh, after considering everything and uh, we can definitely overcome. This can just be a small blip on the screen, but it is a blip, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Naila, what would be your message to the JNK women? My message to the women of JNK would be that even though we've gone through a lot of turmoil the past 30 years, we have a very rich history and a very rich culture. And we have strong women role models in our culture going all the way back to the 13th century. So I think women in Kashmir, we need to reestablish our ties with our rich culture. We need to reestablish our ties with peace and construction. As women, we are nurturing, we are nourishing, and we don't need to be ashamed of those qualities of ours. We don't need to emulate uh, men or imbibe masculine traits to become more competitive or to become more efficient. As women, we are capable of thriving. We are capable of nourishing. And also, I would like to point out real quick, you know, going back to your earlier question about sociological similarities and differences between Kashmir and other parts of the world, when it comes to mental health issues, particularly mental health issues that uh, inflict women, they get stigmatized. Right, women who are open about whatever they're facing, it could be depression, it could be neurosis, whatever, those women get ostracized. So we need to cultivate a more positive approach toward healing, toward talking openly with people and empathetically with people who are open about their mental health issues. So I think cultivating empathy cultivating self-care and self-nurturing, which, you know, and that hasn't always been encouraged in Kashmir. At least in my adolescence, any woman who was invested in self-care would be called selfish. <laughs> so it's very important for us to, I think, question those stereotypes. Thank you. Thank and really, you. Again, again, build our diverse culture. Let's rebuild our pluralistic ethos of which I, as a Kashmiri Muslim, am extremely proud. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining us from the US so early morning today.
Oh, it's not that bad. It's 10.30 now. Oh, no, it's not you, that. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Ghazala, what would be your message from the for the people of j &T? Uh, unmute, ma'am. Unmute, unmute. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'd, I'd like to thank Zira Times for uh, taking this initiative, first of all, and what an amazing job you've done. And uh, I do agree with Naila that we should have had uh, people in from the other uh, regions. That's really important. Uh, even if we are a different union territory now, I still feel that Ladakh uh, should be a part of all of us. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, what one of the things that I really wanted to uh, talk about on uh, on a more practical and uh, of a concrete nature is that it's it's disgraceful that um, entrepreneurship has been here for donkey's years, and we still don't have a women's chamber of commerce. This is something that I'm sure um, all of us will agree that we need to take an initiative in this. Number one and number two. The balancing in the society is brought in by women. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't, you know, care, uh, you know, donkeys, whatever, who, uh, who the lady sitting next to me is, uh, whether she's a Hindu or she's a Muslim or she's a uh, Sikh or a Bodh or anybody. That's not how women operate. Women operate at a completely different compassionate level. It's the person to person uh, thing that we have. And it is, it is right. It is the way it should be. And uh, I think that uh, if we take up the, the, the fact that when women go to work, they don't go to work, uh, they don't just go to work, they carry their home with them. I always say that, you know, if your child calls you, you don't have an option of not picking the call, even if you're in a very, very important meeting, you'll always take the call. Whereas the man would hand the phone to his secretary and say, will you please take the call and say, I'll call back later. Uh, so that's not what a mother does. She picks the phone, uh, you know, so we carry our home with us and we have to work within the framework of who we are. And I'm sure we can. You see, we, have, we are seeing pictures on the net of um, uh, um, uh, women in uh, New Zealand in the parliament uh, feeding their babies and talking. I've seen this in the St Scottish parliament myself. These are the things which we need to make a routine so that people accept them. You know, if things are done often enough, people accept these kind of things. And I hope all of us can uh, get together for the Women's Chamber of Commerce. Please, it's really important. Even Bangladesh has one. Not, not saying, notwithstanding that, <laughs> it's it's a, it's a back. But they have one, and all the you know, Afghanistan has one, and such a powerful Chamber of Commerce, unbelievable. And the work they do, woman to woman, B to B, you know, relationships, women to women. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. It's not about segregation. You can work with a man as well. Uh, so these are some things that practically I think we should be looking at. Thank you, Ghazala, ma'am, for such a wonderful yeah. message. Can I make a point real quick? Just real quick. All of us come from very rich um, religious backgrounds. And we have very rich traditions as well. So I think as women, let's talk about reviving the humanitarian yeah. aspect. Absolutely. of our religions Absolutely. and the humanitarian aspects of our culture as well. And as women, let's talk about building bridges across regional yes. divides, yes. Yes. across religious divides, as opposed to building walls. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Naila. Thank you so much. Uh, next, Mayanka, uh, what would be your message from the JNK women? Mayanka. Mayanka, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I would say uh, my experience with people because I'm uh, mostly online and that is uh, where my presence is. So I get uh, I get feedback in the form of emails, comments, etc. And uh, like I stated earlier, there's a lot of what I would like to refer as spits that I uh, receive. And as women, you know, while even when you're growing up, you know, you are uh, there's this uh, one ugly term that I do not like is ignore karo, ignore it. But I don't believe in ignoring, not everything. I mean, I'm not saying that if somebody is using uh, bad language, you have to come down to their level or stoop that low, but please counter it. Because today, if they do it to you, and if you keep shut, tomorrow they will do it to somebody else. Yeah. You know, please speak up. I do not believe in ignoring everything. When people write to me stuff that they should not write to any human being, forget about writing that to a woman. I like to counter it. And uh, 
uh, I have that, you know, I am talking from a very, I have that advantage. If I think strongly about something, I just make a video on it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. I am so I just make a video on it. And that is my answer to uh, people who try to bring me down or oh, pull me that down. Game. In your life, <laughs> you also lucky. Exactly. So yeah, so that is my message. Please speak up. Do not ignore. You don't have to be afraid of anyone. Uh, it takes all kind of uh, human beings to make this world. And you very much have a right to live and do whatever you like. I'll give you a real quick one more example. Uh, two days back, I upload, three days back, I uploaded something, uh, you know, I, I looked like I used an app and I made my make, made myself look like a pineapple and I spoke about scorching heat in Delhi. And somebody wrote me one paragraph long uh, comment that, you know, you are supposed to maintain your grace and you are loved across Jammu and Kashmir. You should not put up some, I said, I'm sorry, I'm not going to kill the child in me. You know, I will not do it. And uh, look at the audacity and I really appreciate your guts. You actually expect me to delete my hard work of half a day. That's not happening, you know. So please give it back. Thank you, yeah, ma'am, for so this positive message. Uh, thank you for this positive message. And women have been trolling here in Kashmir since a very long time now. Uh, so thank you for this positive message. Next, Basima, what would uh, be your message to the JNK women? So uh, I'm a part and parcel of uh, the community here. So my message definitely would be that none of us is as strong as all of us together, right? So let's all uh, rally together and put up a fight. Uh, I wouldn't say against the male chauvinism, but definitely make a point for ourselves and encourage more and more women to be a part and parcel of our success story. Um, if I have to say, I have 400 odd people working with me and I have around 80 percentile belonging from the women uh, folk. So uh, I guess that is my strength. Fine. I see them, uh, you know, juggling between home, kids, uh, assignments back in school. And thanks, you know, to all of them. But still, they put up a very good presentation. And um, I would like to share um, and actually a big shout to my all my, you know, colleagues back in my institution that uh, they have they're definitely doing a wonderful job, wonderful job still with you know 2g because as all of us spoke um, right now i think um, you know mine is probably the only profession which did not get hindered you know we were not in the physical setup but definitely in the virtual setup we made our point across so uh, thanks to all of them and um, just one more request to the to all the individuals, you know, both the male and the female folk of Kashmir, especially, that let's not, um, you know, you know, pass those laws about individuals, you know, who. I think as we're talking about the internet, the 2G connection. Showed its face. <laughs> <laughs> and what it can do. <laughs> we cannot do anything to this. So okay. let's. Uh, I'll go to Ma'am Shiva. What would be your message uh, to the JNK women? Uh, my message to JNK women is like stay positive. This time will also pass. And uh, like I have also, uh, I'm always always thinking about it. Like we have so much of domestic violence in our Kashmir. And if a woman will stand with a woman, there will be no violence in our home. We should be backbone for each other, whether it's my home, or anybody play in uh, any place and uh, like we should have positive thoughts and if there is a person or a female whom we know and is having any kind of problem whether it's domestic violence first we should stand for each other irrespective is that my brother or he's my father even he's uh, having violence on my mother or anybody we should stand for each other and um, that will give strength that that will erase that phase which is in english that uh, a woman is women's you know big and me or west and me so that is my message for today okay thank you so much uh, next khazan munir i would like you to uh, just i had lost my connection basically yeah. there was some technical glitch um, yeah. thank you thank you ma'am uh, Kazan, uh, 
I would like you to just give the message to the. Gym. Yeah, like like uh, my message for everyone first is that uh, the people who say that uh, women are weak, first of all, one thing is for them, the statistics उठा के देख लो, औरतों को कम heart attack आता है as compared to men. <laughs> so you know who can take the pressure well, okay? We can take the pressure very well. First thing. Second thing, my message to everyone, like everyone here said that uh, we should support each other. Definitely, we should support each other. But at an individual level, my message is for everyone: just stay happy. If there is something you want to do, do it. You want support of others, ask for it. You want to talk, talk about it. You want to scream, scream it out. But just do it. That's it. Like be happy. आबाद रहो शादाब रहो खुश रहो लाइफ में एक्साइटेड रहो एंड एज मैम ऑल्सो सेट दैट यू शुड नेवर किल दैट किड इन यू आई नो लाइक द आई एम एट एन एज दिस टाइम रिसर्च स्कॉलर एंड वेन आई टॉक लाइक लाइक आई टॉक टू माई पेरेंट्स और टू माई रिलेटिव और फ्रेंड्स दिस से इच अ चर इन दिस क्या गो इच अ चर आई हैव नो प्रॉब्लम thank you thank you so much so i am happy to be a chair when i am happy to be a chair i will not go in any depression i am happy with my work i am happy with my art i am happy happy with all the research work which inshallah i have to do uh, when a chair is happy in life and my it might be that chair might live longer than the people who call me a chair because my quality <laughs> of life is much better than them so my only message is just stay happy that's it thank you kazin for such motivating message to all the people thank you and i'll go back to basima ma'am would you like to continue uh yeah basically that's what i wanted to say that you know uh, we should support each other and help each other out and uh, more and more women should actually start up and uh, as an individual uh, because i am in an institution as i said so i'm affiliated with a lot of people so i would like to just tell them that i'm always there for them okay uh, beat anything thank you thank you ma'am thank you thank you, thank you. okay let's so let's conclude now and i would like zirat time on behalf of zirat times would like to thank you for all the panelists today it was a great pleasure to have you in the program and we would continue this program and look forward to having you as with coming days inshallah inshallah thank you very much one small point real real quick I think we need to have a session on legislative and policy reforms as well. Everyone has given great messages of encouragement, very optimistic, very upbeat and cause and I love yours bas khush raho aur kuch nahi. Thank you. Khush rehna bahut zaruri hai lekin khush rehne ke liye we need legislative reforms. We need policy reforms ma'am i guess i make- guess i'll be the i'll be the first person to jump into that because uh, i am a lawyer by profession and i'm doing my uh, research phd in criminal law so legislature and me i guess we go hand in hand so definitely if there will be a different session on that so i'll take a lead in that i would also definitely like to just add on that we definitely even uh, require educational you know changes because the kind of educational setup we are still in it still belongs to the 19th century i believe so we really need to move ahead with that and especially no, uh, when we look at kashmir yeah. no, no, what naila was saying it is it's really imp- that this the reason that we need a policy reform that is what we need a chamber for it's a very powerful body which carries so, uh, so why don't we uh, just why don't we start you know all of us out here Absolutely. together we Absolutely. could definitely meet up and take a lead <laughs> I think we should. <laughs> okay, Miss Naila, we've taken note of that. What you said. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks to the Rat Times for bringing us together. Thank yeah. you. We'll have more so sessions much. in future. We'll have Definitely. more sessions. Definitely. In future. Inshallah. Definitely. Inshallah. 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 Thank you, sir. Allah is everyone. Allah is. Allah is. And stay happy.